Good morning. Happy Monday. Overcast here in Woodland and uh, probably for some of the rest of you around the state, a little overcast as well. Some rain this morning. Uh, it's great to be here today with Jay Mahill from Madeira and Creekside Farming Company and we're going to talk to him in just a bit about his background and his farm and all kinds of great stuff going on there. But uh, we'll start this morning with our round robin around the state. Today's question is, what is, what does local mean to you? And how do you help support local? Hopefully you do. Um, so that's, that's our question today. And that can obviously take a lot of different ways and, and uh, obviously is about you. So I'll start. I'm Mary Kimball. I'm the executive director of the Center for Land-Based Learning. And local to me, uh, it can mean, it, de it depends. I, I tend to try to uh, focus in on my region. And my region here, it, it, I think of the Sacramento region. And so that's, I live in Yolo County, so I tend to focus on Yolo County, but Solano County, Sacramento County, uh, Calusa, Yuba, right? It's, it's kind of the surrounding, you think about the counties that are adjacent and I, I think of that as local five to six counties in my region but on the other hand I also think of local in terms of California especially when it comes to agriculture and to food and I always support from a perspective of when I go to the grocery store I always 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 buy California over anything else as if I can and I try to always buy in season as well with my produce which is sometimes hard because I might want those tomatoes off season, but I, I wait <laughs> until they're in season. That's, that's how I support local from a food perspective and also my local businesses uh, here in Woodland predominantly is where I try to go and spend my money and so that those tax dollars stay close by. All right, Dana, how about you? All right. So much like Mary, um, well, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Dana Baker, the Tehama County Farms Leadership Coordinator, and I'm coming from Red Bluff. Um, so I live in Tehama County, but again, like Mary, kind of those adjacent counties, um, Shasta County, Butte, Glen, they all kind of are right here by us. Um, and I as well try to purchase local produce, um, and if I'm buying from the market, I always try to stick to California grown produce and I definitely read my labels for that. Um, but when things start coming in season, I really try to support our local fruit stands. We're really fortunate. We have one right up the road, Julia's Fruit Stand, which um, supplies very local from our local little farmers um, here. And also one kind of exciting thing is I really like to support our local kids in our communities. So uh, my husband and I were, had the opportunity yesterday to purchase a hog from one of our local kids during our online auction, which was really a blessing um, that we were able to do that. And she also was one of my farm's kids. So that just made it even <laughs> special Yay! To, be to be able to do that. And it was a great opportunity. So again, just supporting local community, local to our counties, but also California grown when it comes. Awesome. Joseph, what about you? Good morning all. My name is Joseph Montoya. I'm the Farms Leadership Coordinator for the Sacramento Valley. Um, so for me, much like Mary and Dana, uh, local is sort of in degrees, largely two degrees, one of which um, I just focus mo mostly on uh, the city of Sacramento and sort of county. They're pretty much equal for me um, because I know that a lot of the restaurants that I eat at actually, you know, reach out to local farmers and you know so we have produce um, and livestock you know meat vegetables whatever that comes from counties just outside of Sacramento and they'll take it in here and then all buy from there so you know it comes from local and then stays even more hyper local um, but then for most for the most part it's just Sacramento and then outside of that is just anything California to be fully honest so like um, there's this hot sauce that'll buy that's called pepper plant um, that's made in Gilroy. Oh yeah, that's good and, stuff. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorites. And uh, so, you know, I would say that that's local, um, just because I know that that's, you know, going right back into California. Mm -hmm. So that's my definition. Katie. Good morning. My name is Katie Wartman, coming to you from Fresno. I'm the Central Valley Farms Leadership Coordinator. Um, local to me is, you know, local farmers, um, local 
uh, farmers markets. We support Fresno State Ag. It, their farm market is just not down too far from us. Um, Rosa Brothers milk, you know, just a little bit of hit and miss Ampersand ice cream is is locally made. So just a lot of little local vendors and uh, farmers that have made, you know, more out of their product. So definitely just anything I can find and being in Fresno is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Romy. Good morning. Oh. There you are, Romy. <laughs> Romy Wattenberger. I'm the Kern County Farms Coordinator here in Bakersfield. And local for me is Kern County. Kern County is huge, so we have a lot of vendors, uh, produce. Um, we go to Red House Beef a lot for organic grass-fed beef. There's a lot of local honey I try to get and just support all of them. So there's a lot to find in Kern County, but I try to support all of them. Mm -hmm. Letty. Hi, good morning. My name is Letty Hernandez. I run the program in Monterey, Santa Cruz County. I'd, I'd have to agree local for me is either in within the city, which I'm in Salinas, or in the county, which is Monterey County for me. Um, and then also to the way that I support local is by um, going to the farmer's market um, and then also eating from the mom and pop shops. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are starting to deliver, which I think is really great. They never really had that, that <clears throat> function before and so you know still trying to eat or order in or have it delivered to me um, and support them as well um, and then also too we have folks that come around the neighborhood and they sell like oranges mm -hmm. or tamales or nopales and so I'm I, I like to support in that way as well. That's true I love doing that. <laughs> right now there's a lot of folks selling cherries on the corner which is really awesome <laughs> i'm like yay i can just get it while i'm out all right jay you are up now so it's great to introduce jay mahill from creekside farming company in in madera again um, and i don't know jay so this morning we're literally meeting each other for the first time and it's really great. I know that you've been a supporter of our farms program down in the Central Valley. We're, we're really appreciative of that. Unfortunately, can't be out there in person with you, but uh, great to be doing this virtually. So Jay, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you're from, where you grew up, and uh, how you got to Madeira and some of the background that you had about your, about your, you know, about your life. Okay. Well, I want to answer your local question too. Oh, yes. So Go that ahead. way I feel a part of the conversation. But uh, <laughs> local to me is uh, Madera County. Uh, you know, so we, uh, we as a business, we also try to buy local. Uh, we buy local, meaning our farm equipment. Uh, we buy from our local dealerships right here out of Madera. Uh, chemicals, we try to buy from our local dealers out of Madera County. Uh, parts, supplies, uh, other items that we need on day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. We try to buy from Madera just so we support the, the businesses uh, within our community here. Uh, a lot of them are friends uh, who I bump into, uh, colleagues, uh, our, our kids might go to school together. So we love supporting each other's businesses. So, uh, so we do buy local whenever we can. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Madera County for us. And then in a general broad sense, uh, California ag is local to me, you know, we produce uh, products for California under the California ag, you know, so called logo, mm -hmm. uh, saying, you know, we're California agriculture, and we try to, pr you know, promote California agriculture. Uh, whenever I'm on trips uh, overseas, you know, I love seeing California ag products, uh, you know, but I've always been told, you know, California ag products taste better, look better. Uh, and that makes me feel proud that we grow uh, a more supreme product, uh, a more valuable product that people actually, you know, seek out our product on shelves when they see it uh, overseas. So uh, I've seen that a lot when I've gone to uh, India and some other countries. So, so that makes me very proud to be a part of California agriculture. So even though that's a large statement to say, but, you know, to me, California is still local uh, to us. So, uh, so that kind of answers that question. Um, awesome. A little bit, yeah. About, yeah, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a fourth generation uh, farmer. Uh, my great grandfather migrated to the U.S. back in the early 1900s, 1906. 
Uh, they came from India. Uh, our family had a long history of farming agriculture in India, obviously mainly row crops uh, and those types of uh, crops. Um, so they left India for, uh, for a dream, for a better future, uh, to, uh, to seek out what everybody uh, back then was seeking out, to a better future for their families, to earn more money. Um, but you know, I really tip my hat to them, you know, it was nothing like today where we can log on to Expedia, Airbnb and see what we're going to rent or where we're going to stay or the hotel accommodations or those, those flights that really are, are encumbersome because we don't want to sit in the middle seat or we don't like the time that we're going to fly. And, uh, you know, those types of things, you know, they, you know, knew that they wanted to go somewhere, how they're going to get there. They didn't know how long it was going to take. They didn't know uh, where they're going to make it. They didn't know. So, uh, you know, very, very challenging times, but they still mustered up the energy uh, to, you know, leave their families behind and to set sail and, and go to this, you know, land where everybody talked about uh, of, of, of riches and, and opportunity. So, uh, so they came, they made this long journey and, uh, and they made it to uh, the great state of California and, uh, and they migrated and they migrated into Lodi, California. And that's where our family had uh, originated from in the U S. So uh, they were able to, uh, you know, pool their money together. And at that time, uh, racism and, uh, and hatred was, was still very much alive. Uh, it was very unfortunate, but uh, you know they worked. They worked very hard, but they had to uh, sleep in the stables with horses because uh, because of racism. Um, they couldn't own land because they were foreigners. Uh, so one of uh, one of the friends had uh, had married a Hispanic woman, uh, and it, w which allowed them to buy property. Uh, because uh, there were still foreigners, and at that time, uh, foreigners could not own U.S. Uh, property. So uh, the the lady that one of the uh, one of the friends had uh, gone ahead and married was a U.S. citizen, and uh, they went ahead and bought some property, uh, you know, under her name, and started farming. And as as time grew on, the partners kind of separated out and separated their holdings. And my great grandfather, you know, ended up with some property in Lodi um, and my grandfather migrated and then my dad came to this country, you know, at, at the age of 12 and uh, was very young and, and left India as well. And, uh, and, and I'm very proud that, uh, that they all committed to, uh, to come to this country because it, it gave us the opportunity, the opportunity of being able to be raised in this great country, uh, being able to have the freedoms that we do have and being able to uh, do the things we can do now. Um, and that allowed me to become a fourth generation farmer in California. And hopefully my son, who's a senior graduating uh, oh, wow. this year. Yeah, you know, would, yeah, thank you, thank you. He gets to do his uh, virtual ceremony tomorrow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and so he'll be uh, the fifth generation uh, farmer uh, for our family. And, uh, and he does want to go into farming. So. It makes me proud, just like uh, hopefully I made my dad proud when I told him I wanted to go into farming. Um, so that's a little bit about the history of our, our family. And we've migrated from the Lodi area down south to the Madeira, Fresno area. Um, you know, we came down this way in uh, the mid 90s. My dad started buying property in about 94 down here because property in the Lodi area was very small uh, and was very expensive at the time. So uh, my dad's uh, Predominant family was located in the Fresno, Carruthers, Selma area, and uh, they had large farming operations, so they kind of wanted him to kind of come down this area and set up uh, a farming operation down here and, and be successful like they were. So, uh, so he did that, and uh, in, the, in 94, he started buying ground, and this area, his first property was in the Kerman area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I graduated from uh, Lodi High in, uh, in 95 and uh, applied and got accepted to Fresno State and came down fall of 95 as a uh, ag business uh, major. And, uh, and that's kind of when I left Lodi and, uh, and came down this way. And, uh, and ever since then, I've been uh, in the Madera area and I call Madera now home. Uh, both my kids were born here in Madera, California. So, you know, I kind of call myself a long life resident of Madera, <laughs> California now. So, uh, 
Um, so I have two kids. I've been married. Uh, this year will be my wife and my uh, anniversary of 20 years. I uh, have two kids. Uh, my son, uh, who, like I mentioned, is a senior and 17. And I have a, a middle schooler, eighth grader, who's graduating. My daughter, and she's 13. Uh, and uh, we farm here in Madero. Uh, we oh, grow. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about Creekside. It sounds like you're a diversified farmer. You have a lot of different kinds of crops. So give us a little background about that. Okay, so uh, Creekside Farming Company, uh, we're four partners. It's myself, my brother, younger brother, and I have two cousins. Mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, we farm a little over 8,000 acres. Uh, mm -hmm. We grow wine grapes, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, citrus, and we also uh, own a processing facility for almonds. Oh, okay. um, Yeah, so we, mm -hmm. uh, we grow in about uh, five different counties. Uh, we farm, our farms span from uh, Lodi, Okay. Uh, from uh, Lodi, Livingston, Merced, Chachilla, Madera, and out on the west side, Fireball, and Dos Palos area. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, you know, like I said, we go. You've uh, grown a little yeah. bit since, uh, since your grandfather yeah. and your great-grandfather's time. Yes, yes, we have. <laughs> We've been fortunate. We've been very fortunate and uh, been expanding the operation, and, uh, and we look forward on, uh, on more expansion. Uh, we, we try to do smart expansion year in, year out. So uh, we've been very fortunate about that. And, uh, you know, with, uh, with the kids uh, now getting, in a, of getting of age and wanting to come into the operation, we're trying to diversify more. If we can, we do have some commercial real estate holdings as well, uh, which is kind of outside of the ag uh, industry, but uh, we're trying to just, you know, adapt to the times and, uh, and do different things. Um, going back to our farming operation, we're pretty vertically integrated, uh, meaning uh, we do everything from start to finish. We do all of our own land uh, uh, preparation and development. So we do all of uh, the land prep. We have all the heavy equipment, the caterpillars to, uh, to tear out vineyards and orchards. Uh, we do all the deep ripping. We do all of our own planting of, uh, of the new vineyards and orchards. Uh, we don't put in our drip systems yet. Uh, hopefully maybe that might be something we look into in the future. Uh, we do all of the farming operations ourselves, uh, from all the growing, spraying, harvesting, trucking, and then now the processing. We even, uh, about six years ago when the drought hit, we even uh, created a new uh, arm of ours. Uh, we also have our own well drilling operation. Mm -hmm. So we do all of our own well drilling now as well. So we try to uh, control our fate in-house. Uh, we think we can do it better and sometimes cheaper. Uh, and instead of having it hired out. Um, so we like to, you know, be able to do everything in-house. And the major thing of that is, uh, is we like to be able to do it when we want and how we want it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that does uh, help us uh, in, in a lot of uh, instances, uh, you know, if weather's coming, we can do some harvesting, uh, you know, 24 or seven. Uh, we can do uh, land development a lot quicker, you know, when we need something done. Um, so a lot of things, uh, when we can control it, we can, uh, we can do it when we want. So we appreciate being able to have that expertise and, and learn, you know, so we didn't know anything about well drilling. We <laughs> hired in some people and, uh, and we learned and, uh, we had some stumbles and, and we learned, but you know, that's, that's farming. You know, we, if we, we tell everybody, if everybody knew how to do it, you know, it'd be easy. Everybody would do it. So when it's difficult, you know, you limit of the amount of people in that industry, but uh, it's a learning experience and we, we learn, we love learning. We're, we're always learning something every day. So when you're talking about how diversified this is, um, a lot of different crops, the processing, the well drilling, the land management, sounds like, um, you know, you have a lot of different kinds of job opportunities with your company. And I'm also wondering about if you've got, if you've, added anything new well you've talked about the well part but anything new to the company within the say the last five years you know thinking about these students who are listening today or are high school students or just graduate or in college what are some of the jobs that you see whether it's at your company or otherwise that are going to be really in demand and that you're looking for for the future not just for your company but in agriculture in general what should people be studying what should they be speaking of learning and continual right. learning. What are some of those things that you that you maybe that might be gaps at your company that, or that will be gaps in the future? 
I think computer technology, uh, computer technology is going to be some of the biggest stuff uh, that uh, these kids will uh, need to learn and, uh, and have the ability to do. And most young kids in this newer generation all have that, you know, they all love playing video games. My son, you know, one, um, you know, so having that, you know, expertise, I think is going to be a great, uh, uh, asset you know we're looking at drone technology right now mm -hmm. um we're looking at you know purchasing a couple of our own drones uh for the time being just for scouting purposes uh being able to fly drones and be able to see what uh our operation looks like uh from above ground uh look at our orchards look at our vineyards and and, and manage uh uh you know crop health uh, is is the is the predominant step uh, stepping stone for us but uh, we've been doing uh, uh some meetings and uh, and have had some examples done for us where we've had imagery uh shots done of our properties and and they're giving us data back with that and uh being able to see uh, gaps in uh, irrigation uh uniformities uh plant health issues uh soil variabilities uh things of that nature. So uh, having that expertise of being able to navigate, understand that technology of drones, how to fly them, how to program them, how to bring that data back and, uh, and manipulate that data to be able to utilize that in an office setting, I think is going to be huge because, uh, you know, that, that's labor savings. You know, one of the companies had brought back to me and said, you know, if we can tell you where some of your gaps are, in just some of your irrigation systems you know now you don't have to have you know irrigators out there checking you know mm -hmm. irrigation we can do that with a with a flight over your operation and be able to give you all that information back so now you can pinpoint areas of problems and send people out to just check those areas instead of having to check all eight thousand acres uh sure. at a time and stuff you know so there's there's savings um you know be able to uh pinpoint uh, plant health uh, issues and instead of scouting all all the, uh, the acres and, and that's only on our operation and you start looking at the the wonderful orchards uh, you know the other large farming entities out there and uh, and and the and the scarcity of, of labor that we already have and being able to better utilize that labor to pinpoint where we need them to is going to be huge so having people come in through that type of uh, mindset is going to be huge. Um, so, so the computer programming, uh, the computer technology age is going to be huge. Mechanics, uh, everything that uh, we own nowadays is all computer driven. So, you know, being able to understand how to plug into a piece of equipment and, and diagnose it is huge. You know, a lot of the mechanics I have don't understand that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and being able to have somebody who can come in maybe not have the mindset of how to turn wrenches, but be able to diagnose and then work with our mechanics and say, well, okay, the problem lies here. You know, they might not have the knowledge of turning a wrench, but have the knowledge of diagnosing. But now that partnership, you know, we can, you know, team them up and say, okay, hey, you diagnose, you fix is a great partnership, you know, so we need that. Um, so, and, and then coming back into the office level, uh, mm -hmm. you know, everything is computers now, you know, I mean, setting up our networks in our office, uh, all of our, our information, you know, and computing that information, and, uh, the different programs that we work with, um, automation, automation is something huge for our operation that we're looking towards now, pump automation, uh, you know, automating things out in the field of getting that information from the, uh, from the field bring it back into the office and, and understanding it and computing it, you know, is something that, you know, I really tell kids, you know, you understand that you get that, you know, I used to be, you know, the tech person when I was younger, you know, for my family, I used to understand computers and stuff. And now I'm losing <laughs> it. You know, it's good. It, it's, it's, it's surpassing me. Well, and I go to my kids so fast, right? Yeah. yeah. And I ask my kids now, Hey, <laughs> how do you do this? How do you program this? Or how do I, find this on my phone and stuff. So it's, it's surpassed me that this younger generation, and it's true, every generation, the next generation after these kids, mm -hmm. those kids are going to understand it better than these kids do. And, and that's evolution. So um, I think, you know, we utilize what those kids know and, and bring that into agriculture and agriculture is, is willing to, with arms wide open, you know, mm -hmm. it, it bring these kids in 
and and uh, and help them to help our operations out. So I tell kids and uh, you know all these kids that have been out to our properties that you know ag is is so different nowadays. It's not from you know when my grandparents were here, you know, driving a tractor, menial farm work. I mean, there there still is that aspect of of tractor driving, checking the fields and stuff like that, but there's so much more now as well. I mean that, you know, and, and, and ag pay so well, you know, from the bottom up now because of the scarcity of the people that we have and the technology that our equipment, you know, utilizes, you know, we, we, we have to pay, you know, we have to pay to bring in, you know, people that understand that type of, uh, of equipment exactly. because we have, you know, millions of dollars worth of machinery out here, we can't just throw people on there and say, go operate it. So mm -hmm. uh, lots of opportunities uh, in agriculture and a lot of well-paying jobs in agriculture nowadays. Well, thank you for those great messages. That's good because we always say that, but it's one thing coming from us. It's a whole different thing coming from the companies themselves. So kind of getting back to your, your crops and, and who you grow for, I was just interested to know kind of some of the examples of who do you grow for? Do you, I'm assuming you have contracts, uh, with, with, yeah. you have your own almond processor, but, uh, yeah. and, but just kind of where do your products go and what's been going on lately with COVID and what are some, what are, what is hitting you the hardest right now? So uh, going back to your first question, so who we grow for, so all of our wine grapes are grown for Gallo. Uh, okay. So we sell to uh, Gallo uh, Winery, they make all the wine. So uh, we're one of their larger growers. Um, our citrus uh, get packed uh, under the cutie label. So, okay. uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a bunch of different growers, but you know, we, we fall under the umbrella of the cutie label. So uh, our citrus go there. Our pistachios are under the wonderful uh, pistachio label. So okay. we're a wonderful uh, grower. So our pistachios uh, go there. Our almonds, uh, we do pack uh, for ourselves, um, but you know, most of it, we don't do any uh, specialty pack. It's all what we call brown skin. You know, we, we sell to uh, uh, packers, so craft, uh, you know, different, uh, different companies, uh, you know, that, uh, that make the final end product. We sell the blue diamond as well. So along with doing our own processing, we sell to other packers as well. Um, so on that part of it, our walnuts uh, go to uh, a local packing house here, uh, you know, out of Selma, uh, Point Dexter Nut. Mm -hmm. um, so those are what all of our, our crops go under. Um, going to the next question uh, with the whole COVID issue, um, ag has been pretty fortunate. Um, you know, we're essential. Uh, whatever that means, I don't know. People <laughs> said, you know, can you explain what essential means? Uh, you know, to, to say I'm essential and the next person isn't is, is you know, to me kind of demeaning. So uh, I say, you know, we, we, we grow a crop that needs to be tended to on a daily basis. Uh, we can't just shut it off and walk away from it and say, we'll come back to you in a few weeks. So, uh, so we, we take care of things that need to be tended to on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, just like you know, dairies, you know, cows need to be milked twice a day. You know, they're, it's very crucial that they're, uh, they're tended to on a day-to-day -day basis. Same thing as our crops, our permanent crops. They need to be watered, they need to be fertilized on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to take care of those uh, uh, things. Um, some of the things that we've, you know, that have kind of given us hiccups, uh, you know, we, we do have to spend a little extra time every morning talking, training our employees, making sure everybody's well, nobody is sick, uh, nobody's been around anybody sick. Uh, more trainings, you know, to tell people, uh, keep, you know, the cleansiness uh, up, you know, if you're out working in the field before you take your breaks, wash, use hand sanitizer, don't be touching your mouth and everything or your face. Farming in general, I mean, we use socialize, uh, distance, uh, socialized distancing to the max, right? We have one person on a tractor out in the middle of a field, so we're six feet plus, you know, in that situation, you know. So, um, you know, we're not on top of each other, you know. In the office, you know, we, we tend to mind our space and, and, and keep ourselves spread apart and everything. But uh, so ag has been pretty... Uh, pretty well in that situation. We haven't been hit where we've had to shut the doors down and all that, but, you know, we've had to take more precautions. You know, we do uh, 
we do check on the safety of our employees and make sure that they're they're well and mm-hmm. and they're safe and uh, and they're healthy and their families are healthy. Um, you know, we've had uh, in in cases where you know if we have both uh, spouses working for our operation, uh, you know, where maybe one spouse has had to ask for a little bit of time off because now kids are at home, uh, they're not going to school, mm-hmm. daycare is an issue, and and we've had to work around that, but mm-hmm. you know there's nothing we can do. It is what it is, is our mentality. Um, it's nothing that they wanted to uh, have impact them. Uh, it's nothing we wanted to have impact them as well, but we have to work around it. You know, it's just, it's, it's a curveball that was thrown at us and you know, we'll do the best we can with it. So, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've managed and, and that's what we can, that's the best we can do right now. I think the country and the world has done the best they can. We've all managed in our lives right now. Um, you know, there's been, uh, things that we've had to work around and uh, uh, things we've had to sacrifice. Just like I mentioned earlier, both my kids were going to be graduating this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son, senior, he had to have some sacrifices, just like some of these students uh, that might be listening have maybe had to have some sacrifices themselves. And, and mm-hmm. it's a shame, you know, hopefully, you know, they'll get to still uh, partake in some of those milestones, um, you know, but whoever yeah. knew, you know, this was going to happen, you know, none of us yeah. woke up uh, thinking of this. Well, and like you were talking about earlier, you think about what your great grandparents went through, right? Just to immigrate yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's all, so. it's all degrees. It's all relative. But right. certainly every generation has had significant hardships at some right. point in their lives. And that usually makes them stronger. Exactly. Uh, and, and, and it makes, you know, those around them and, and our community stronger. And I hear you on that note, you, d- you do a lot of community work. What are some of the kinds of things that you do? You're very proud of Madeira uh, and your region. What are some of the things that you do locally uh, to communicate or, or to, I mean, to give back to your community, to your community? Things like this, you know, I love uh, helping kids out and uh, love helping kids, uh, and, and teach kids about uh, about agriculture and and how to try to bring them into agriculture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I sit on a lot of boards. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm on the Madera County Farm Bureau Board, uh, mm. which I was uh, past president for uh, been past president for two years now. I was on I was president for uh, four years, um, and uh, uh, within that uh, board, I sit on the scholarship committee. So. Uh, mm-hmm. This past year, we gave out uh, sixty thousand dollars worth of scholarships to kids in Madera County that are going to be pursuing uh, uh, education in agriculture. So uh, the year before that, we gave out forty thousand uh, dollars mm-hmm. to kids going into uh, the study of agriculture, and I'm really proud of that. Um, through the Farm Bureau uh, boards, I sit on the uh, State Farm Bureau boards uh, labor committee. I'm the chairman of the labor committee for. Uh, CFPF. Uh, I also sit on uh, the board for Fresno State, uh, which I'm the I'm alumni at Fresno State, and I'm mm-hmm. proud of that. Go Bulldogs! Uh, <laughs> I'm on the foundation and governance board there. Um, we uh, we help tend a 140 million dollar uh, uh, not grant but uh, budget that we have as an endowment uh, that we spread out throughout the college uh, for different programs and scholarships. Uh, so I'm very proud of that uh, board that I'm on. I'm also on the San Joaquin Valley Wine Grower Association board. Mm-hmm. I'm on the Madera County or uh, the Madera Community Hospital board. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on the Liberty uh, High School uh, Ag Advisors board. I'm the chairman of that board. So I mentor the high school <laughs> there for their FFA program. So lots of boards. Uh, there's probably yeah. a few I probably missed in there, uh, you know, and, and a lot that uh, do, uh, do intend to agriculture. So, mm-hmm. uh, and I, and I enjoy those. Uh, and so, you know, I, I love giving back, you know, in those, uh, in those, uh, means and ways, you know, and, and like I said, especially if they're tied to ag and if they're, especially they're tied to uh, students, uh, I, I help in this program, uh, I mm-hmm. help put on the, the ag uh, summer camp. We bring out kids, uh, every year uh, during summer, uh, eighth graders uh, that are, you know, same thing on the fence post about agriculture, come out to our operation and, uh, and see what we do and ask questions. And, and we tell them about the types of jobs available and stuff. Uh, so 
lots of uh, lots of stuff uh, around ag and stuff yeah that's so that's I, hot <laughs> i'm impressed and i know i know a lot of a lot of great leaders in agriculture in california you obviously are right up there with with all of those wonderful efforts and i and i do want to thank you on behalf of center for land based learning especially for the madera farm bureau you guys have been great supporters of the farmers leadership program um, and we have on the scholarship side, we're going to be doing some announcements here soon because we had a huge response to our farms leadership program scholarship application for, at, at the end of year, their first year, and they're going to be going off to college. And then we also have uh, an alumni scholarship program. So students who were in our programs when they were in high school, now they're in college. They're studying ag and they have gotten a scholarship from us uh, in the past and they're now applying for a second year. We got such a great response, uh, Jay, that we actually didn't, don't quite have enough money to give all of the students who deserve to get scholarships. So we're in the process of looking out for additional funding. So um, you and I maybe will have a little discussion about that offline because it sounds okay. like you um, believe in this very much and you know how important it is to get these scholarships out as do we. And these are great students and they deserve our support to go into agriculture and to continue to study uh, this great uh, industry. So we don't want to take up any more of your time. It's been great to speak with you this morning. Um, again, I thank you for, from, um, the beha on behalf of the organization for all of your support and all you do for agriculture. And I know that if there's folks who are interested in reaching out to you, uh, we will uh, also per let people know, you know your, your contact information if we get students yeah. who specifically are interested in yeah. talking with you about yeah, have them, have them email me, call me, and uh, yeah, love to answer any and questions. And we have programs, even though you know Katie, we have programs as well in San Joaquin County. And so, so maybe we can talk about that in the future too, because we'd love to engage you in other regions of the state. Since you're yeah, so, no problem. I didn't realize your, your operations were, were larger than, than just Madeira County. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we're, awesome. we're, we're all over. <laughs> you are all over. Okay, thank you so much, Jay. It was great talking thank with you. you. And we'll we'll speak soon, I'm sure. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very thank you. much. Have a great right. day. You too. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thanks, Jay.